Hi, this is Roy with Math Emergency, and today I will be showing you how to integrate using your TI-89 calculator. We'll cover indefinite and definite integrals, and also how to find areas between curves. So integrating using your TI-89 is really not much different than taking a derivative using your TI-89. And in fact, the setup is pretty similar. First, you're going to want to go here to the uh, calc menu, calc for calculus, that is. So F3, and you'll see the number two option is integrate. So that's what we're going to select, two. So we have our integral sign and an open parenthesis. And after the open parenthesis, there is um, a specific sequence of things you have to put. And the first thing you have to put is the function that you want to integrate. And today I think I'll pick x squared. And after you put the function you want to integrate, you press comma. And then you want to put the variable that you're integrating with. Um, in other words, on your paper, you would see this as integral sign x squared dx. Whatever would come after that d on your paper or in your book, uh, you're going to want to put after this comma in the second spot. So it after the open parenthesis, it's the function that you're looking to integrate and the uh, variable in which you're integrating. And so that's it for indefinite integrals. You can close the parenthesis, press enter, and it's going to give you um, it's going to give you the antiderivative of x squared. And so if you're doing um, indefinite integrals for your homework, don't forget to put plus c after this. Uh, so you don't lose your points, but uh, that's really all there is to it. To do a definite integral, one where you have limits of integration, um, you're going to add two more things. And if you guess that they were the limits of integration, you would be absolutely right. So after the um, variable of integration, so there's the function that you want to integrate, the variable of integration, comma, then in this order, your lower limit, in this case, let's integrate starting at 0, comma, your upper limit, and let's do 4 for this one. So this says I want to integrate x squared with respect to x from 0 to 4. So now all I need to do is um, hit enter. And there we go, we have 64 over 3. And, and really, that's it for the basics of this. Um, one thing you might want to know, you may not know already, is you'll see down here you have auto. And what that means is when it computes answers for you, if it can give you an exact form, it will. Exact form meaning a, uh, a fraction like this. Um, otherwise, it will give you a decimal approximation. If you want that decimal approximation right away, you can leave it in auto. Just hit your diamond key and then enter, and it will give you the decimal approximation. Um, one other way that you can integrate is if you're on the y equals screen because you need to graph for whatever reason your function, We'll do x squared. So I've put x squared in there now. For some reason, I need to look at the graph. OK, there's our lovely x squared graph that we're all familiar with. <coughs> You'll see I have this math menu up here. And by pressing F5, <coughs> you see that this is the integral sign. So we want to integrate, we're going to press 7 on this menu. And you just type in what you want your lower limit to be. In this case, we'll do 0 again. Enter. We're going to ask you for the upper limit. Type that in. 4. That's what we're going to do. And it's kind of cool because it'll shade the area for you. And then it'll give you a decimal approximation for this shaded area. So. I don't know, that's pretty neat and a handy way if you're already on the uh, graphing screen with your function on the screen, you can certainly do that. Um, 
one more tip I want to tell you about when you're integrating <coughs> is uh, let's say you want to integrate areas between curves. Um, so let's say you wanted to integrate the area and between x squared. What you want to do is put them into the y equals, and then this way we can get a view of what they look like on the graphing screen so that we can tell which one is on top and which one's on the bottom or which one's to the right, which one's to the left. So we know how to set up our integral. So there's our x squared. 3x will be coming up. Voila. So if we want to integrate this area here, okay, um, you'll learn or you have already learned from your calculus that you're going to integrate and the function you want to integrate is the top function minus your bottom function. Can't really do that on the graphing screen or at least I don't know a way to do it. Um, and so you, you'll need to go to your home screen and you could put all that in, in here. You could come all the way back and do 3x minus x squared. OK. Um, and for this, something like this, it, it's not really a problem. But you can get some pretty wild functions going on. And so what I do to keep things straight and to not have to worry about where I put all my parentheses to separate top function from bottom function or left function from right function is I put them both into the y equals screen. So I see I have my x squared and my 3x. Now I just have to remember that 3x is in y2 and x squared is in y1 because I want to subtract x squared from 3x. So when I go back home, I'm going to go f3, integrate, and I can simply just type in y2, which is where my 3x function was. And, I, and then x in parentheses next to it, minus y1, open parentheses, x, close parentheses. Okay, and this represents 3x minus x squared because I put those values in for y2 and y1. Now comma, and then what goes next? That's right, the variable we're integrating with, which is x in this case. And then um, comma again, and now the lower limit, 0, comma, the upper limit, which if you're doing between curves, it wouldn't be 4 here. It would actually be 3. That's where they intersect. So I'll just do to 3. And there you go. So the area strictly between these two curves is 9 halves, or if you want a decimal approximation, 4.5. Okay, so that's all for this video. Uh, please leave your comments, any questions. Also, if you like to see other videos using your TI-89 um, or any sort of math topics in general, including Mathematica, go ahead and send us an email or leave us a comment. Thanks.